I, the Inquisitor is probably the most sacrilegious game of all time. Based on a series of best-selling fantasy novels by Polish author Jacek Bakara, it tells the story of Mortimer Matterdean, an Inquisitor of the Holy Office, in an alternate history where Jesus didn't die on the cross. He came down from it and took vengeance on the world, throwing incense into the eyes of anyone who ever looked at him funny and founding a version of the Catholic Church committed to the principles of power and revenge. As soon as I heard about this game, I had to give it a try. I'm a huge fan of alternate histories, and this grim dark reimagining of one of the world's oldest religions really takes the cake as one of the wildest ideas I've ever heard of. I also felt that I would probably get more out of the game's theological deconstruction than most. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and though I don't practice anymore, I consider myself to be an agnostic these days, I still keep this plaque I earned at the end of my term as an altar server on the wall in my man cave, more as a reflection of the way I do my absolute best to hold true to my commitments than anything else. I said I'd do it until I graduated high school, and thus, I stuck to it. The same theme would, unfortunately, come up with my playthrough of I the Inquisitor, because I kept playing it long after the game started to disappoint me. Though much of the discourse about this game will center around its subverted version of theology, its true sins are not in its world building, but in its narrative direction and game design because despite a strong opening, the game loses steam in the second half, before fumbling away the final act like Kyle Shanahan in the Super Bowl. It is incredibly disappointing, which I hate to say, because there was a lot of promise here. So let's dive in to the unfortunately uneven I, the Inquisitor. As I said earlier, the game starts out really strong. Honestly, after the first four hours or so, I went to bed ready to call I, the Inquisitor, the Greedfall to Witcher 3's Dragon Age, a game that touches on so much of what we love about another series, but presents it in a different package and at a lower budget. If I, the Inquisitor, had stuck to what made those first four hours work, I'd absolutely be saying that right now, and calling it one of the best games I've played so far this year. The first half of the game is heavy on conversation and investigation, with an occasional sword fight and a trip to a mysterious realm called the Unworld thrown in. This type of structure was great. The investigation segments, where you look over a dead body in search of clues, are among the best parts of the game, and the conversations are fairly well written and help to establish the alternate history world building. The combat, on the other hand, is brutal. It's by no means challenging. There isn't a fight in the game that will really stress you out. It's just so cumbersome. Mortimer swings his sword like a caveman swings a club, slowly haphazardly, without any semblance of flow or grace. He can run at top speeds and dodge like he's rolling nat 20s left and right, but when it comes time to hit somebody, he moves like he's underwater. The game's marketing makes it clear that Mortimer is not an expert duelist, and it sure as hell shows it every time someone throws down the gauntlet. During the early going, I didn't have a problem with this at all, because I assumed that combat would be a minor part of the game but it becomes increasingly more common in the second half, and by the end, you're bouncing between boss fights every 15 minutes. In doing so, the game doubles down on all of its weakest elements instead of focusing on what made it good at the beginning. You can say some similar things about the segments in the Unworld, the Lovecraftian realm Mortimer visits to unravel the mysteries he's trying to solve. In a vacuum, they're pretty good. It's a great concept, and I enjoyed how they became progressively harder as the game went on. But in the first few hours, they're a bit of a novelty, as Mortimer only goes there after he's deep into an investigation, when he needs to tease out information he wouldn't be able to find out through any other means, like events from the past that he wasn't there to witness. But in the final act, if you're not swinging your sword, you're probably in the Unworld. There's just too much of it, a problem that is compounded by the fact that if you're caught by one of the enemies in the Unworld, then you guessed it, it's time for more a hack and slash and a fishbowl. I'd much prefer if these segments had been truly stealth based, or if Mortimer had been given a means of attacking his enemies that didn't force more swordplay into the game. The frequency of the Unworld segments also present a narrative problem. Like I said, early on, Mortimer doesn't use it all that much, only to find the final, elusive clue to help him pull all the pieces of a difficult case together. But in the late game, it's really overused, 
and often before Mortimer does any investigating at all, to the point where it makes him seem like a really shitty detective. And unfortunately, that's far from the only narrative issue here. The climax features a string of revelations that happen at a breakneck pace, are especially heavy in references to obscure theological lore, and the manner in which Mortimer experiences them requires some serious leaps in logic on his part. The end result is that it feels like someone handed a Warhammer fantasy storyline to Hideo Kojima. And don't get me wrong, that's one of my favorite properties and one of my favorite creators, but they should never, ever cross paths. There's also a significant portion of the game that basically boils down to an extended side quest, which is especially strange. Eye of the Inquisitor is, functionally, a roughly 8 to 10 hour linear title, with some elements of player choice here and there. If the game were longer, or if this section served as a short story styled intro, like hunting the griffin in White Orchard in Witcher 3, or if it was simply optional, it would be fine. But in the grand scheme of things, it really just didn't need to be there, and though the game does include an item you acquired during this excursion in the climax, it is really out of place, to the point where its sudden reappearance had me laughing in my man cave at 1 o'clock in the morning. The ironic thing is that this side quest was probably better than the main plot, and if the developers had focused on it instead of the path they ended up taking, they might have ended up with a better game. But probably the most frustrating thing about Eye of the Inquisitor is its approach to player choice. Typically, when given the opportunity to speak, the player is presented with two choices, an aggressive response and one that's more even keel. The game appears to respond with a corresponding chime depending on what you choose, and though this, in principle, is fine, it doesn't lead anywhere. There's no meter to help you see whether your Mortimer is treading down the path of sinful mercy or righteous vengeance, and ultimately, I have no idea what choices or what combination of choices determine which of the game's endings you get. From what I've looked up online, it appears that there are four of them, one that is bittersweet and three that are varying levels of bad, including one that is basically a complete mission failure. Even after watching several videos, I have no idea how to get them, and though my best guess is that it has something to do with the choices you make during a segment of the game where Mortimer is talking with a group of villains, the responses available to you are very unclear. To make matters worse, the game straight up tells you that your objective at that point in the game is to stall for time, and it almost seems like asking questions, you know, the thing that would actually keep the villains monologuing, is the wrong thing to do and the path that leads to two of the worst endings. This makes absolutely no sense and turned what has started to become an uneven experience into a downright disappointment. That said, there were a few things that I did enjoy about Eye of the Inquisitor. The boss fights, though they were weighed down by the core combat, had some interesting concepts. The fight with the vampire is a standout example of this, and the battle with the fallen angel does this too, before anchoring it with some unnecessary ads. Chasing the Merry Executioner is an absolute highlight and easily an example of the many things that made the game great during the first few hours. This segment features a lot of quick time events, which come up throughout the game, and though I know they have a bad reputation with some gamers, I honestly enjoy them if they're well implemented, and I think the developers did a great job of using them here. In terms of the characters, Amelia is great, and I loved her rapport with Mortimer. The Cardinal starts out really interesting as well, and I like the political dynamic that takes place between him and our Inquisitor. The puzzles were also strong. The cabinet in the sacristy and the chess match with the Persian were two of my favorites. The best part of I, the Inquisitor, in my view, was the world building. The alternate history elements were really interesting, and I was consistently impressed by the way the game remixed actual parts of the Catholic faith to fit their vengeful version of it. There's a part in the game where Mortimer observes a mass, during which you can hear some of the gospel, along with the intercessions, which is where the churchgoers ask God to hear their prayers for various causes. As someone familiar with how this part of the mass is supposed to go, I was floored by how authentically it was recreated to suit their purposes, and how utterly disturbing it was to hear this alternate history's version of prayers. It sent chills down my spine, and for that, I had to give the developers a ton of credit. This subverted theology would make for some great discussions, which is something I'm sure the novels already do, and if the game were better, I'd love to dive into all of that myself, but as it stands, I can't really imagine playing this one again. 
Still, I'd love to see the developers take another crack at this one down the road. There's a lot of potential here, especially in this universe. It's not hard for me to imagine a version of Eye of the Inquisitor that features more world building with a heavier focus on investigation and either less combat or simply a better system for it. And that's a video game I'd be sinfully excited for. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Keymailer for getting me set up with a copy of this one. Big shout out to all my YouTube channel members and Patreon subscribers, including James Pruitt, Raven Lampkin, Corey Matson, Gustavo Balaby, Pythonian, and Reed, who receive early access to my videos thanks to donations of $5 to $10 a month. See you guys next time.